shot with ice just the iron Counsel of the people, so when I'm speaking in Hebrew I wanna make it sense to you That I tried the tribulation, what's beyond magic Now your path is what you Alright, Shalom Yisrael, Shalom Yasha Allah This your boy, your wet time, y'all with ice the iron Counsel of the people, and on the phone with me I have the um young brother Levi, introduce yourself, huh? Alright, um, so Levi, he's going to be my reader for today, um, and every now and then if he has some um, information to put forth, he's going to intervene. First and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Mashiach, which is God in the name of Christ, and uh, we're going to go straight into it. We're going to talk about New Year's Eve, how New Year's Eve is of the devil. This is not New Year's. January 1st is not the New Year according to the Bible. Okay, thus saith the Most High, the um, New Year really begins in the spring. And to prove that, we're going to go to um, Deuteronomy 16. If you could go there for me, Levi. All right. We're going to go straight into it because the Most High said that we're not supposed to um we're not supposed to follow these other nations and their customs. We're not supposed to follow these other nations um in reference to their spirituality and you know how they determine that the world should be. You know, most of these events, Christmas, Halloween, Easter, New Year's, all of these things are associated with with paganism and what you're going to find out according to the bible is that you have to change and reform your mind so if you got that read deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 4, 4. i mean i'm sorry um 16 verse 1 salakia verse 1 observe the month of abib and keep the passover unto the lord thy god right so the bible says observe the month of abib and keep the passover unto the lord thy god it said, observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Let's find out what the pa um, when is the Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So it shall be the what? The beginning of months. The beginning of months is the first month of the year. This is the real New Year's. Read on. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So Read the Bible on. It says this month shall be the beginning of the month. Like the word abib. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse one. The word abib means spring forth, and we know Passover happens where in the spring time. So we have to ask yourself, how did it change? When did the beginning of the year change from spring to winter? Read that, Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Verse 1, observe the month of a bit. So it said, observe the month of a bit. Read on. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. All right? So now we have to find out when did this change? How did it change? Go to the book of Daniels. Chapter 7, verse 23. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Where Daniel is going to explain in prophecy the times and the seasons being changed. Like, for example, New Year's taking place in the spring, now taking place in today's time, the winter. Read that. Uh, the book of Daniel chapter 7, and verse 23. Uh-huh. Thus he says, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. So the fourth beast, which is the last beast in Daniel's prophecy, the dream that he had, is a kingdom, a nation of people. That's what a kingdom is. Read on. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. All right, this is supposed to be the last kingdom upon the face of the earth, which when you read Daniel's and you go into history, you find out this is talking about the Roman Empire and all of the and all of the kingdoms that spring forth out of the Roman Empire. Read verse 24. Verse 24. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Right. So the ten horns is the ten kings. These ten kings represent what? The EU, the European Union. 
to show you that this is a fulfillment of prophecy. America is the final kingdom that came out of the Roman Empire. Read verse 25. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. So this kingdom was going to do what? Speak, speak great words against the Most High. Read on. It shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And wear out the saints of the Most High. The saints of the Most High are the Israelites. All right, how did they wear out the saints of the Most High? By putting us into slavery on slave ships, selling us to four corners of the earth, and for 350 years, enslaving us and, and beating us and all of those things. Read on. And think to change times and laws. And think to what? Change times and laws. To change times and laws. How did they change the times? Well... We're going to read this from out of the dictionary, just a regular Webster dictionary. We're going to look up the word October because the names of these months will show you how the people of Rome, the so-called Caucasians, who promoted colonialism and still promoting white supremacy to this day, changed the times. October, the 10th month of the year. October, from Latin Octo, eight, as October was the eighth month, counting from March, which was which once was the first month of the year, which once was the first month of the year. So March, at one point in time, was the first month of the year. And octo means eight, meaning October was supposed to be the eighth month. But in today's time, October is what? The 10th month. This is how they change times. We're going to read in the same dictionary. We're going to look up December and see what that says. December, the 12th month of the year. December was the 10th month of the Roman calendar, which started with March, which started with March. The name comes from Latin, decim, 10. So just like how you have decimo, decim means 10. December was supposed to be the 10th month, but now was known as what? The 12th month, because the same people of Rome, which is the same people of America, the same people of Britain, the same people of Scotland, they changed the times and made it into something else. Read Daniel's chapter 7, verse 25 again. Verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Uh-huh. And think to change times and laws. And think to change times and laws. What's the law that they change? The Sabbath day. They change the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, which is the reason why many of you Christians go to church on Sundays and treat Sunday like it's the holy day. But when you read the Bible, Saturday is the holy day, the seventh day of the week. Go to Exodus chapter 20, verse Remember 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Uh-huh. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Read on. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. What is the first day of the week? I know some of y'all think the first day is Monday because that's the day that we all go to work. But if you look on your calendars, the first day of the week is Sunday. Read on. Read, read verse 9 again. Verse 9. Six days out thou labor and do all thy work. So you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's six days. Read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Because Saturday is what? The seventh day. But what did the heathens do? They, they titled Saturday, or they titled the Sabbath day, Saturday after the God Saturnalia. To confuse you. So you wouldn't follow the law on the seventh day like you're supposed to. So they change times and seasons. By making you think that October is now the 10th month. Instead of the 8th month. And making you think December is now the 12th month. Instead of the 10th month. And what else did they change? They changed the new year. 
um, Levi, if you can, just um, read, um, look up the goddess Janice. Because when you look up January, January come from the name Janice. Levi, read that for me if you can. Janice, uh, the Roman god, and this is out of the uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Right, it says uh, Janice. In Roman religion, the animistic spirit of doorways, January, and archways, Janine. Uh huh. So it said the um. What what is it? You said the doorways. It says uh the animistic spirit of doorways. The spirit of doorways, because when you look up this guy, this is the doorway from the past to the present to the future. Read on. Janus and the nymph uh, Camusine were the parents of Tiberius, whose death in or by the river uh, Abula caused it to be renamed Tiber. Mm -hmm. It says the worship of Janus traditionally dated back to Romulus in a period even before the actual founding of the city of Rome. Okay, so now this is an ancient god. Janus is an ancient god, even predating the Romans themselves. Read on. There were many Janice, i.e., or for example, ceremonial gateways in Rome. These were usually freestanding structures that were used for symbolically auspicious entrances or exits. Particular superstition was attached to the departure of a Roman army, mm -hmm. for which there were lucky and unlucky ways to march through a Janus. Mm -hmm. so, so because Janus is a gateway going from one place to another, this was also a god our goddess that they will use or pray to before going to war. Now I'm going to read also this definition of January in the um, <clears throat> January in the dictionary. It reads January from the two faced Roman God Janus. So this is the same God that we're reading about right now from um, what you said, the Britannica. Right, right, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. The Encyclopedia Britannica that's breaking down the history. This is the same God. So it said from the two-faced Roman God Janus, because the month looks back to the old year and forward to the new. I'm gonna read it again. Because the month looks back to the old year and forward to the new. Yeah, I was just gonna say uh, a lot of times uh, uh, our people be thinking that. Uh, they're not worshiping these other idols or these other uh, deities by keeping these uh, customs and stuff like putting a tray in your house and stuff like that. But um, when you read about Janus in the Botanica uh, Encyclopedia, it says there were many Jani in Rome. These were usually freestanding structures that were used for symbolically auspicious entrances or exits. So people would walk through these freestanding structures to symbolically represent an entrance or an exit. And, you know, so it wasn't like bowing down to, uh, you know, uh, a, a statue or idol or anything like that. In, in this particular instance, they're just walking through a gateway and that's showing reverence to, you know, these idols and stuff like that. Right, just just simple as just walking through the gateway was, was giving reverence to the goddess, our God. And and that's deep in itself because it also said, um, read that part where it said the ceremonies. It says, uh... Uh, there were many Jedi, i.e. ceremonial gateways in Rome. Uh-huh. Now, a ceremony, it says ceremonial gateways. Now, a ceremony is like a banquet, a party, or um, something that people come together and traditionally do. Now, every year, people traditionally come together and celebrate New Year's on New Year's Eve and wait for the ball to drop and all of that stuff. You understand? So now when you looking at this, when you looking at um when it says <clears throat> um the two-faced um Roman god Janus because the month look back to the old year and forward to the new, what are you doing on New Year's Eve? You looking back at what happened the previous year and you looking forward to the future. So that's a ceremony. 
And you are giving reverence to a false God. And saying that, we want to say shalom, peace, and we pray that the Most High, through His only begotten Son, give you much understanding of this new year. Shalom. Yeah, well, Ike is the iron, he got the street fire. FBI, they be having my phone tap. Look outside, CIA, they got my home tap. I keep it so real, y'all got to feel me. I think conspiracy theory, man, they got to kill me. Yeah, well, Ike is the iron, counselor of the people. So when I'm speaking in Hebrew, I want to make it.